Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. We need to make sure that everybody's taken care of, whether that be highest ranking colonel on the base or the lowest ranking airman basic. Um, everybody needs to get a package, whether that's for their job or just for their personal luxury. In the vast and complex network of the United States military, the concept of a military post office stands as a unique and vital entity. Originating from the historical roots of the USPS, founded in 1775 amidst the American Revolution, the evolution of postal services has been deeply intertwined with the nation's history. The Postal Service Act of 1792 and subsequent transformations, including the significant shift in 1970 to an independent agency, underscore the dynamic nature of postal services in America. The inception of the U.S. Postal Service as an autonomous body marked a new era in postal history, one that would eventually extend its services to the far-reaching arms of the U.S. military, ensuring that even in the most remote locations, like the heart of the ocean aboard an aircraft carrier, a connection to the mainland remains steadfast. This extraordinary postal service aboard aircraft carriers is more than just a mail delivery system. It's a lifeline. It bridges the gap between the high seas and home, carrying not just parcels and official documents, but also the emotions and sentiments of families and friends. For many service members, the arrival of mail delivery is a highlight, a tangible connection to their lives on land, a reminder that though they are out in the ocean, they are never truly isolated. Let's turn our attention away from the general operations of the postal services on U.S. aircraft carriers and instead focus on the detailed inner workings of the system. Delving into the processes managed by the committed staff on these teams provides a glimpse into an impressive logistical achievement. These staff members, frequently facing challenging environments, are the crucial yet often unrecognized force behind the smooth functioning of this intricate operation. Uh, so we get mail coming in from all locations, whether it be uh, overseas Europe or the stateside, anything destined here for Siganella we take care of. Uh, we have services like registered mail for the commands here, uh, personal accountable mail for individuals. from the general dynamics of the postal system aboard aircraft carriers, it's important to highlight the specialized process NAVSUP employs for handling larger packages. This innovative approach involves the recipient receiving an email containing a barcode. This barcode, when presented at the delivery outlet, facilitates the collection of the package. This system stands out for its efficiency and speed, significantly enhancing the tracking and delivery of packages.
Shifting our focus from the specialized postal system, let's consider the critical process of cargo loading when an aircraft carrier docks at port. We may get, like today, 41 pallets of food. Uh, there's supposed to be 10 pallets of general stores, the, the ship store, for what we can actually buy, goodies, drinks, water, snacks. As the ship berths, a different kind of hustle begins, one that is vital for the sustenance and morale of the crew. Resupplying an aircraft carrier is an immense task, far from a day's work. The operation usually involves the loading of essentials, like general stores and snacks, crucial for the crew's well-being. This logistical endeavor starts early and can extend late into the night, demanding a coordinated effort from a dedicated team of sailors. Each member has a specific role, from the ones on the pier ensuring the cargo is securely rigged for transport, to the riggers and fort lift operators on the elevators, facilitating the movement of supplies. It's a complex ballet of logistics and labor, with each sailor playing a part in the vital resupply mission. Delving deeper into the day-to-day -day life of an aircraft carrier reveals a blend of military rigor and unexpected comforts that are both fascinating and vital for the well-being of the crew. Among the most intriguing aspects is the presence of onboard stores, providing a haven where sailors can momentarily step away from their demanding roles. These ship stores act as mini marketplaces, stocked with snacks, food, and drinks, offering a slice of normalcy in an otherwise extraordinary setting. Impressively, some carriers even house a Starbucks, allowing staff to savor a familiar taste from home. Albeit at sea and at a more affordable price. It's benefiting sailors by giving them the hometown feeling, I guess. Uh, Starbucks you usually don't find on, on ships, especially warships. Transitioning from the unique amenities systems aboard an aircraft carrier, let's explore another critical aspect of naval operations. Underway replenishment, unrep. This method, also known as replenishment at sea, RAS, within the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and Commonwealth of Nations, is a sophisticated technique for transferring fuel, munitions, and stores from one ship to another while in motion. The practice of UNREP, developed in the early 20th century, became a cornerstone of logistical support for the United States Navy. Particularly in the Pacific Theater during World War II.
This innovative strategy enabled U.S. carrier task forces to maintain their presence at sea indefinitely, a significant tactical advantage. Under replenishment is the primary method that we receive stores, uh, food, fuel, or anything else that we may need while at sea. It's what allows us to sustain ourselves to stay out to sea longer. Even though we are a nuclear ship, uh, we still have to receive stores to feed our sailors and, uh, and support that side of it. Understanding UNREP's historical significance and its continued role in modern naval operations provides a comprehensive view of the logistical marvels that sustain these massive sea vessels. In addition to the sophisticated process of underway replenishment, UNREP, Aircraft carriers also utilize another crucial method for receiving supplies, helicopter deliveries. This method is particularly useful for transporting items that are not feasible to transfer via the UNREP method. Helicopters offer a versatile and rapid means of resupply, capable of delivering essential goods directly to the carrier deck. This aerial delivery system is an integral part of the logistical network, ensuring that the carrier remains fully stocked with necessary supplies, even when traditional sea-based replenishment is not possible or practical. While helicopters are indispensable in naval supply chains, the role of specialized cargo aircraft like the C-2A Greyhound and the V-22 Osprey are equally vital. These aircraft enhance the logistical capabilities of naval operations, particularly in carrier onboard delivery, COD. The introduction of aircraft like the Osprey marks a significant evolution in cargo transportation. This American multi-mission tilt rotor military aircraft is a remarkable example of innovation, blending the attributes of a conventional helicopter with the long-range, high-speed cruise capabilities of the turboprop aircraft. Equipped with both vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL, and short takeoff and landing, S-TOL abilities, the V-22 Osprey stands out as an ideal solution for naval cargo needs. The versatility of the V-22 Osprey allows it to operate in a variety of environments and conditions, making it an invaluable asset for modern naval operations. As we conclude our exploration of the fascinating world of logistics and supply on U.S. aircraft carriers, it's clear that the seamless operation of these floating cities is a testament to human ingenuity and technological advancement.
That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.